This is a quote. You should be able to invest directly in the places you love, says Jace Wilson. He's founder of Neighborly. It's a company that makes it easy for people and businesses to invest in community projects that they care about. One of the first, a streetcar line in downtown Kansas City, Wilson's hometown. Jace is here to take us through his vision for crowdfunding community change. Jace, welcome. Thank you all for having me today. Uh, quick show of hands, was anybody at City Innovate Summit yesterday? Okay, I apologize for the duplicate effort here. Uh, I'm Jace, the CEO of Neighborly, the community investment marketplace, and we are disrupting the $3.8 trillion municipal securities market, which is the market through which our nation's places build things uh, from the Golden Gate Bridge down to the mundane, like the road outside of your house and everything in between, including schools and parks and playgrounds and just about everything of civic value. And it's a market that used to be of, for, and by people, and it used to be part of civic life. It was something that we would do, uh, and it was a primary mode of savings. And it was very direct, and it was very intimate, and it was something that was very local. And it's become very global and very hard for individuals to participate directly in this billion-dollar-a-day market. And so part of it is the number of intermediaries, the number of folks that are uh, inserting themselves into the process, and the number of steps between the project that's being financed and the people that ought to be financing it. And it's also being exploited because there are uh, very smart people in the system uh, currently driving up uh, taxes and reducing value in communities and overcharging investors. So, And another aspect of it is that it's become way too exclusive it used to be four of them by people. It was something that you could go and buy a $50 savings bond in your community. Uh, now it's something that you need 25000 and up to even start the conversation. And that is another challenge because the lack of number of participants increases the cost due to lack of liquidity. It's also become extremely complicated, and I brought uh, with me some really light reading, if anybody's interested, the 400-page uh, preliminary official statement for an upcoming financing for the San Francisco Public Utility Commission uh, that they wouldn't print if they didn't have to, but legally they're required to print this. And it was produced by some uh, really high power, high priced lawyers and read by probably not very many people. Uh, and that's been become the market. So Neighborly is collapsing the value extraction chain and making their direct relationship back between the places and the people that invest in those places. And we're also democratizing access, making it uh, more accessible to people that don't necessarily have $25,000 a pop to invest in their communities. And also making it possibly fun to invest in the places and the civic projects you care about by making it very simple. And there's a quick video. I don't know if the audio is going to play. The... How people learn oh, about yeah, investments awesome. in the places they care about. Every day, cities and public agencies raise $1 billion through the municipal bond market. For more than 200 years, this market has financed projects from the Golden Gate Bridge to your local schools. From summer 2015, Neighborly is making it easier than ever before to learn about how to invest in your city. We're taking a trusted market and making it accessible and personalized. Here's how. You can log in, browse investment opportunities, read the story of a project you're interested in, and place an order. We'll help you understand your options with graphs and no-nonsense guides. Be a good neighbor and invest for your future with Navy. Hey. And uh, yes, I realize that we're doing this really democratic, uh, US centric thing, and the Brit is the one that does the voiceover. That's our head of product, uh, mastermind, Rodrigo Davis. And we're proud to announce that uh, next month we're starting with our first live deal. Uh, it's going to be uh, 60,000 acres of open space in the Mid Peninsula here in the Bay Area. And we're going to be working with some folks in the industry to make this more accessible to the people that take their daughters there to, on the weekend to imagine what impact they'll have on the world someday. So, And the core of this is realigning the uh, value capture and value creation. So where value is being created and who's capturing it. We like to talk about it as a step back towards regenerative finance instead of the current extractive system. So. What happened when people were removed from the market? First and foremost, it's very invisible, very subtle, but uh, 
over time, an extremely powerful force in how our cities are either thriving or not doing so well. And when you outsource your capital formation for civic projects to global banks and institutions, it's no surprise that over time, as you're paying all of your interest, all of the value that you're creating out to other parts of the world, that there is an extractive effect that happens. Versus the old time uh, way of doing it where if you bought bonds in your community and then you would get a coupon every six months and you would go down to the ice cream store on Sunday, on the Redemption Sunday, and, and invest back in the community. So. But it's also, um, we're, we're, we're doing something much larger than what people think we're doing. We have this like cutesy heart-shaped logo and, and Wall Street likes to cast us off as quote unquote retail demand aggregation. Retail is their funny word for people. Um, but what we're really doing is uh, building a turnkey crowd first civic capital formation engine that doesn't just involve people saying, hey, I wanna buy this bond. It's uh, all of the uh, intermediate layers that go into financing with the hope that Someday, we even make the market more accessible to city makers like you uh, to do financings directly from the public and the community that you're working with uh, in a way that doesn't cost you $100,000 in legal fees, 100000 in advisor fees, 1% to the ratings agency, and so on and so forth. And I want to wrap it up and take any questions that you might have, but these are some quotes from our uh, current user base. There's a sign-up waiting list right now of about 6,000 people. If you want to join us and be part of this movement back to community finance, join us at neighborly.com. Uh, thank you. And if you want to read this bond, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll happy to loan it out to you. So. Um, imagine trying to apply for a job without an internet connection or trying to find a place to live. Oh, I, do we have questions? I'm sorry. No, 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 we do, we do, we do, we do. We're casual enough. Stop. I will start. Jace, don't go away. Hi, Jace. I'm Maureen Sedona, and I'm the president and CEO of Goodwill here in San Francisco, Hi, San Mateo Marin. Marin. Thanks for your presentation. You. I'm curious, you know, um, in all in our city here, our fine city that we love so much, so much development has been has been funded by capital from you know uh, international banks and also city bonds that are given to developers at a very low interest rate, two percent and below. Um, how? What's your sense of how something that you're posing? You know, this disruption can can really help some of the social enterprise nonprofits and other nonprofits in the community to be able to leverage capital to be able to try to be a player in the market. Well, that's a wonderful question. In, in the case of uh, any uh, social mission organization that's aligned with the city, every penny counts. I think that's fair. And as we dove into this market and began to research it, we started to look around and analyzing thousands and thousands of records and realize that there's a, kind of a filthy, dirty secret going on um, and that there are school districts in lower income parts of the Bay Area that were paying upwards of 8% on cost of issuance. And that's not to say they're paying 8% on year over year, but the amount of money extracted from the deal up front equaled 8% of the principal. Uh, so in a $10 million issuance for a school that's supposed to last 15 years, $800,000, uh, that goes up in things like copying, pasting documents and charging $1,000 an hour for it. Uh, things like ratings that maybe don't necessarily have the same uh, merit that they had back when that system was the only way of telling how a city was doing. And so there's a capital efficiency part of it. Um, there's also something intangible that we're not really sure yet how to describe that there's that psychology of investment that happens when you get somebody that directly puts money into a project their uh, psychology towards it changes. So hopefully, uh, as we do this and, and hope that it brings people in more in line with the project and they're more willing to help out with the project. Um, for example, if you invest in a park, you might be inclined to go to the park and pick up litter on a Sunday. So hopefully between the engagement and the efficiency, there are at least two ways. Sure. Hi, I'm Mark Sutton from the Northern California Community Loan Fund. My question is, 
Uh, what, one thing that people are always concerned about paying for stadiums, and I know that's a really big problem, but is this something you envision for, hey, you want to want a new Warrior Stadium? You know, you can then invest in the bond yourself, and if you don't want it, you don't have to pay for the, I guess the bonds have to be paid back. But anyway, I'm yes. just wondering if you've thought about something that big. That's quite a big project. Yes, that's a, that's a wonderful question. <laughs> Go Warriors, right? Um, there's, no, there's no NBA team in Kansas City, so I can say that. But I will say go Royals, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. And we hope that it becomes a tool, an instrument that, uh, in the case of a stadium that has you know, some degree of uh, civic impact, that, uh, but it's largely a private enterprise, that people, the fan base, can be the first uh, in line to purchase the debt and hopefully reduce uh, some burden on the expectations of the public realm to, to finance. That's a wonderful question. And, Above uh, my desk in Kansas City uh, sits a framed letter from uh, Mayor Sly James, who's going to be talking to you in a minute. Uh, we know him as your favorite mayor's favorite mayor. He helped us start this thing as, OK, we're going to do this streetcar project. And it was like tens of millions of dollars. And we were way ahead of our time at, at that point. But uh, we were thinking of it from the outset with that scale of project in mind. So thank you. All right. Thank you.